all right welcome back everyone to another video and a lot of people have been honestly requesting for this one and it was about time i did it so risk 5 uh, it's a big thing everyone's talking about it open source cpus um something that you can make on your own or trust someone else to make for you and uh, check the source code out uh, once you are comfortable with it uh, so today as you all know i do have the RT uh, A7 dev board here with me uh, and I've added the ARM, um, ARM open core thing with the Cortex M3 uh, we ran that and we tested that um, so I think it's only about time that we do the risk 5 as well and take a look at what it actually is so we are taking a look at the Sci-5 which is by far the most known name with risk 5 uh, at this point in time uh, of course they use some bits and pieces from rocket chip uh, and other sources so which is interesting and uh, we are taking a look at their e300 which is a mcu grade uh, core and it's the same one in the uh, sci-fi's high five chip um, which is actually available to buy and it's an actual chip uh, sadly, the Freedom U500, which was earlier available on the RTA7, is only available on the VC707, which is a fairly expensive dev kit. I won't call it the most expensive dev kit for in terms of FPGA. Uh, this is still cheap. It's around $3,000 to $4,000, depending upon where you are. But today, we are looking at the cheaper one, thankfully. Uh, the E300 and uh, let's take a look. look so you can actually just download the pre-compiled bit stream and you can get it from here you just click download and you will have that so i've gone on to vivado and you can see the flash is complete successfully um and you get an mcs file so you program your uh, on chip mem on onboard memory the qspi flash and that uh, in turn flashes the fpga so click ok and you go back i have my uh, terminal set up with the uh, correct uart port and we are going to reset push the reset button on this one and uh, it will the light will turn off and it's back on and now you can see the demos all going on we have the sci-fi logo on the screen uh, it says uh, welcome to the demo gpio program and we have a few LEDs blinking and I think you can like change the color of the LEDs depending upon which button you press and stuff like that so um, sometimes they change automatically other times you can just press the button and change them uh, yeah so that's the basic demo of sci-5 uh, risk 5 just running at on the uh, on the dev board but you can actually download now this is the open source part of it you can actually git clone the whole repository um, which is this one and this is this includes all the other repositories uh, and the design for the actual cpu itself so you can actually compile the whole cpu uh, SOC in this ma matter so the MCU SOC for Freedom E300 can be actually compiled so they have all the instructions here the problem is if you want to run your own code uh, you need a pretty expensive for if you are living in India uh, kind of cheap if you are living outside India you need a JTAG debug you need a specific one um, and uh, i don't have it with me so how do i run my own custom code um so we'll take a look at an example and see how that is done which is a really neat trick so i have also cloned their sdk repository which has a few examples which we can take a look here in a second so in their github profile we have the freedom uh, e sdk and the usdk of course we need the E series SDK and it actually has some examples in un under software so I'm going to run the dry stone uh, benchmark which is a non-floating point 
calculation benchmark and stuff like that and to do that I have cloned the repository now when you do it for the first time uh, the compilation is going to take very long not for the software but for the CPU which we'll see in a second so I have the uh, software here um, and I've cleaned the repository and I have it at make software program dry stone board is freedom e300 rt and you press enter and it will start to compile with the gcc for risk 5 and now you can go ahead and see that it has compiled on in your file browser so if i just click here go to the freedom e studio uh, freedom e sdk folder uh, go to software and go to dry stone i can see i have it compiled right here now what i'll do is i'll copy this and i'll paste it uh, under uh, the uh, cpu repository which is like the main cpu repository in this case uh, which is actually the freedom mod for me because i did mod it a bit and we'll remove these files right and paste this as dry stone uh, and then rename it to proc dot I think it should be ELF which we'll see in a second and if we open up the make file that we are going to use which is the make file e300 rt v5 kit now this one the main make file uh, all right I think it's the common.mk we can scroll down and we can see I have added a small little modification to here so I've added this line which basically does the ELF object copy uh, to convert dot ELF to, to uh, dot bin file so we get proc dot ELF and we put uh, we uh, output proc dot bin and then we add that binary file um, with the uh, MCS file. So the Vivar, so the Vivado command line utility does that for us. And all we have to add is, I think, this bit of code, which then allows us to uh, just connect that uh, bin file uh, in on onto our MCS, and that gives us our dot MCS file. So if we go ahead now and inside uh, it is freedom mod we run uh, make uh, f uh, and then select our make file for the e300rt dev kit and the mcs target i'm also going to time it so you guys know which how much consecutive runs uh, actually take and let's go ahead and just press enter on this one or uh, i think the mcs was already made so we need to clean that out and then make mcs all right so we are back and it has compiled it took a lot longer than i thought so it took around an hour uh, initially and then i had to correct an error uh, and then it took around 90 more seconds so about an hour to uh, do everything and here you can see that uh, on the first address um, uh, on the first bit here we have the bitstream for the fpga uh, and the e300 cpu design and uh, on the next address which i think the bootloader kind of jumps to this particular address on the flash memory we have the uh, prog.bin and that starts to execute from this particular address and the rest is as it is so yeah it took a fair bit of time and again that's probably because i was kind of recording and screen capturing um, in the background and uh, let's go ahead and flash that and see how that works so i have vivado right here and i can go ahead and configure probably not a program configuration memory device and here instead of my downloaded mcs file i can actually go a level up and go into my uh, freedom file build rt dev kit and uh, under hardware 
uh, under object I should have my .mcs file so when I open that up uh, I can see that and we are configuring the entire memory device uh, apply and flash so this again takes a few more seconds to go through uh, I think about a minute or so alright so with that done let's see how it looks on the terminal and we will go ahead and open that right there that's not the one there we go so this from our previous output and we are going to uh, again flash the MCS by pressing this flash the FPJ by pressing this button and dash that ends of flashing the MCS now we have a bunch of garbage output so the reason is the FPA design got changed to earlier it was running at 65 megahertz and they for reasons changed it to 32 megahertz 32.5 something around there so they uh, clocked it to half of what it was and forgot to change the UART design and that meant UART is still thinking that it's running at 65 megahertz um, so it's not at the 115200 uh, baud rate so it has gone down so if we uh, lower the baud rate so control A and control D our baud rate is now halved and now if we press reset there and uh, that just uh, pops up so it starts the execution and uh, the FPGA itself doesn't get very hot in this uh, in this situation but, but uh, let's see how much time it takes to give the answer of uh, like the benchmark um, so dry is kind of an old synthetic benchmark it doesn't really hold up with time but it's also kind of a very basic benchmark so in a way you know what you're getting um, let's just wait this one out all right so the dry stone benchmark is taking a long time which doesn't surprise me because they're running through about um, 100 million cycles um, through the dry stone and I usually just limit it to like 10,000 or a thousand to get immediate results with um, with slower systems like sub 100 megahertz and this is definitely sub 1 meg 100 megahertz is running at around 35 uh, megahertz so this can take a long time now it says the core frequency is 65 uh, megahertz but that's like just hard coded in 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 the example itself anyways uh, i hope you enjoyed this and uh, now in this day and age you can actually go ahead and compile your own cpu which is really interesting and really something to look forward to in the coming years and how that shapes the industry um, again thank you so much for watching uh, make sure to hit that subscribe button if you are new hit the bell icon and do all of that good stuff and i will see you all in another one